All right, everybody, welcome to section 3.5. So this is gonna be another type of derivative rule. Um, so let's see how this might apply to actual derivatives. Okay, so example one, uh, find the derivative of each function. Uh, so, all right, that was pretty easy. 2x plus three, okay. Part B, x plus y to the third plus y is equal to negative two. Hmm, well this is a little weird. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. And then this one, part C, sine of xy is equal to four. Uh, that I'm not sure about either. So that first one I could do, but these second two, there's something weird about them. So what is it? Uh, well, both of these, two examples or both of these functions they are in terms of x and y it's in terms of both you have x and y running around on the same side um, it's not like part a where you can get it so it's like y equals at least not very easily um, so I have both, it's in terms of both variables. So functions like these are not explicitly defined in terms of x. Instead, they are defined implicitly they're defined implicitly because y is assumed to be a function or a function in terms of x. So somewhere in there, like if you, we could, like it might be possible to figure out like what y equals, like you could solve for it. Um, we just don't know what it is right away. So it might be, you know, just x depending on the type of equation uh, or x squared plus four uh, or even sine of x but we don't know for sure because you know you don't exactly know how to solve this out so why is some kind of unknown function of x um, but it is still in terms of x but you still need to account for its derivative using a symbolic notation for the derivative of y so what is the derivative of y that would be dy dx. So we're gonna stick with this notation here. And there's a reason why we do this. You could also use y prime uh, if you wanted to, um, but I'm gonna stick with dy dx just because this notation is gonna come up uh, a little bit later. So if you can kind of get used to it now, it'll help you down the road. All right, so using this notation, we can combine with our other rules to obtain implicit differentiation. So the process, uh, it, it's a little bit weird at first, but you just gotta remember that you still have to account for the derivative of y, but you can only account for it symbolically because you don't know what y actually is. So the process is, is that every time you take the derivative of a term with y, you need to multiply by dy dx. So the dy dx is gonna account for that derivative of, of, uh, of the y. So once you've taken the entire derivative of the whole function, so like you would do the entire thing, you can then solve for dy dx. Uh, so your answers, uh, a lot of times are gonna have x's and y's, both of them in there. Um, sometimes it might just be an X, sometimes it might just be a Y. Uh, you're not going to know really until you actually try to solve for it. Okay, so let's try this process out uh, with that previous function from uh, example one, part B. So all of your rules still apply here. Product rule, chain rule, quotient rule, power rule. We can use all of that stuff. It's just that you got to keep in mind when you take the derivative of a term with Y, you got to multiply by dy dx, um, which you were doing all along anyway. Like if we had the equation y equals x squared, and, is, and I said, what's the derivative? Most of the time, you probably went y prime equals something. Well, instead of y prime, it's just dy dx. 
is equal to 2x. So when it was defined explicitly in terms of x, like we did this process, so you just had to do that one time. Well, now you might have to do it more than once. Okay, so let's see how it goes. So just go through it term by term by term. So the derivative of x is 1 plus the derivative of y to the third. I'm just going to use the power rule. So pull the 3 down. But I just took the derivative of a y term. So now I need to multiply by dy dx. Okay, so then plus uh, the derivative of the next term, the derivative of y is just 1 times dy dx, just like it was before. When you took the derivative of that y, you wrote dy dx, so same thing. Just now we can see an actual visible 1. And then the derivative of negative 2, that's just a big old constant. Okay, so there's the process to start. Well, now that you've taken the entire derivative, now you can solve for uh, that dy dx. So we're going to solve for this dy dx here. Uh, and it's okay if you have more than one, just treat it like a variable and solve for it. So we're going to swing the one over to the right. And at the same time, let's factor out a dy dx, since that is what I'm trying to solve for. So now that I've, that I've factored it out, now I can just divide uh, by the step in the parentheses. So dy dx is going to equal negative uh, 1 over 3y squared plus 1. Okay, and so that's how implicit differentiation is going to work. So I'll stop the video here, and then we'll try some more examples in the next one.